we've made it through most of Hollywood's summer blockbuster season, what a season it was, I think it's the perfect time to check in with IMAX Corporation. It's a company behind the ultra big screen format where people love to go to see the biggest, most explosive action movies as I saw Jurassic in it. IMAX screens are now running in over 950 theaters across 63 different countries. There's currently a 400 plus theater backlog for installing a new one. We last heard from IMAX's CEO a little more than two years ago in June of 2013. Since then, the stock has given us a terrific 40% gain, and we love the stock then. However, IMAX suddenly hit a wall a month and a half ago. Stock down more than 15% from its highs despite this great box office. And we think it's in part to, due to newfound weakness in China, or at least people think it is. So it now accounts for a substantial part of the business and an even larger part of their international growth strategy. Still, the stock's been defended by multiple analysts of late. And when IMAX reported a couple weeks ago, the company delivered a solid quarter, inline earnings higher than expected sales, 35% clip year over year. And this company's been around. IMAX's total global box office up 60%. The company raised its full year new installation guidance. They now plan on opening 120 new IMAX theaters this year. However, IMAX seems to be uniquely tied to China. All right, they already have 239 theaters in the People's Republic. The company's been planning to take it to IMAX China business public on the Hong Kong stock market, difficult to talk about right now, in registration. The China IPO was originally scheduled for this quarter, but after the crash in the mainland Chinese stock market, you know, we've got to wonder a little bit about the deal's fate. I think this Chinese exposure is the reason why IMAX is now six points off its highs, especially as the U.S. movie box office has been incredibly strong during this period. So should we be concerned? Should we be looking at this stock as a bargain now? Let's talk with Rich Gelfand. He's the CEO of IMAX Corporation. Find out more about how his company's doing and where it's headed. Mr. Galvin, welcome back to Man Money. Thanks, Jim. Great to be here. Okay, Rich, I, I want people to understand there's several metrics that you should look at, it, it, not just where the screens are, but the movies, the box office, and the opportunities. So why don't you just tra trace out how you're more an international, international story with tremendous box office uh, box office opportunities. Great. Yeah, so IMAX is in 65 countries around the world. It's not that hard to measure. We grow our network by... I don't know, 110 to 125 theaters a year, a year. We put films through the existing network and the, and the new theaters that we built, and revenues go up, and hopefully earnings go up, and EBITDA goes up, and the stock price goes up. And that's what's been going on for a number of years. But it's an ecosystem, though. I mean, people don't understand maybe that I think it's just the theaters. Oh, more oh, than that. oh, it is an ecosystem. And, it, and in fact, it's become more and more so. So when IMAX years ago, we had to beg people, the studios and filmmakers, right. to release their films on IMAX. Then phase two was we increased the box office. We brought in incremental audiences. Uh, we got more publicity around the movie. Now lots of people want to do their movies in IMAX. All of a sudden, in this latest iteration, we've really become much more integrated in the making of the movie and the marketing of the movie and the release of the movie. So the next two Avengers movies are going to be shot in their entirety with IMAX cameras. They'll be released to other theaters, but you know they'll really be focused right. on the IMAX release window. Star Wars, later this year, JJ used the IMAX cameras. Yeah, but in a way, it's relevant, because today, Mission, this weekend, Mission Impossible 5 open. We've been integrated in, in the marketing and the distribution for months. So right. I sat in on a dinner with Tom Cruise and how to integrate things. We turned the Vienna Opera House into an IMAX theater and showed it. In, uh, that was the world premiere there, where um, you know Tom talked right. all about the value of IMAX. And uh, this weekend in the U.S., we did over 15 percent of the U.S. box office. So we right. are part of an ecosystem with filmmakers, with stars, with studios, and that—that's the glue that makes IMAX special for audiences. Well, I'm glad you brought up all that background because I'm going to show you a chart that indicates that at least some people, uh, some hedge funds, perhaps, are trading your stock as if it's just. A proxy of Shanghai, and maybe we can just show that it trades almost one for one. That, is that a correct impression for of the company? Well, not not at all, really. I mean, first of all, the IPO that we're doing of our China business is on the Hong Kong exchange, not the Shanghai exchange. So it's a less volatile exchange. So the highs in Hong Kong were never the highs of Shanghai, and the lows aren't the lows. So even if you wanted to make that play, it's not the right comparison. Second of all, China is less than a third of our business. And um, as you know, with uh, MI4, and this year has been a fantastic year for movies with Fast and Furious, The Avengers, Jurassic World, Still to Come, Bond, Star Wars, a number of other movies you had, people don't know yet, The Walk, about the guy who worked walked across the World Trade Center by Zemeckis, Everest. It's, a, you know, it's been prob you know, one of the best box office years in history it'll end up right. being. So I think people are distracted. I think 
China's an opportunity for us much more so than, than it is a risk. Well, Rich, it's funny because when I saw that chart, I said to myself, if they didn't break out China, the stock would be trading on all these great things, like MI5 being big and you were over in Vienna to start. I would expect a spike today. But because of the Chinese thing, people say, well, it doesn't matter. Well, you never know. I think years ago, people, when we start, we started in China about 15 years ago. When we first went there, one of my shareholders, a hedge fund, said to me, I count China as a negative. Because when you do a deal in China, it makes the company less valuable. But I think our growth in China, our positioning overall has helped our stock price over the years. I think we're just caught in a short-term trading pattern. I mean, over time, I think the underlying value is there one way or the other. And the other thing I had been concerned about in China was they have this blackout period for Hollywood where they don't show Hollywood movies. Uh, totalitarian is a communist party. But the, con the, the Chinese movies are doing well. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we uh, started doing Chinese movies in IMAX about five years ago. And they're not household names. You know, people aren't comparing, uh, you know, Star Wars to a movie they haven't heard of right. over there. But we're doing a film now called Monster Hunt, which my guess is your family didn't wake up this weekend and say, want to see Monster Hunt. But in fact, uh, the opening weekend of that movie was our biggest opening ever for Ch Chinese language movie. We've done north of $20 million in less than two weeks over there. So it's its own ecosystem, to go back to the point right. you made earlier. But I think people in the West aren't really familiar with it. No, it, it would be probably impossible to tie in with Netflix, right? You couldn't do an IMAX movie that would then go on to Netflix. We've actually had discussions yeah. like that, and we've talked to them about things like that. So I think the whole issue of windowing, as you know, is very complicated right. and very interesting. And frankly, I think it's going to change rapidly over the next couple of years. So I think if you run an entertainment company, you have to be open to how windows are going to roll out. But IMAX really shows blockbuster movies right. in the best out-of-home way possible. So for now, we're very tied to the release patterns and we're very tied to the studio, the way they release these blockbusters. Well, movies. I'm glad you clarified that. And anyone should go into the IMAX page. You'll see the number of blockbusters or perceived blockbusters that could happen. It's really extraordinary. It's a big trajectory right now. It's probably the better trajectory to look at than the Shanghai stock market. That's Rich Gelfand. He's the CEO of IMAX Corporation. Been a big winner for people who watch the show. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.